So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to memorize receptors and its associated G protein linked second messengers. First, I'm going to tell you a personal story. So I have a very cute girlfriend. So I told her, have one M&M for her cuteness. So for GQ, the receptors are H1, A1, V1, M1, and M3. So however, when I am too mad at her, I inhibited her by locking her up. So when I'm too mad, the GI is for too mad. So GI is for the receptors of M2, alpha 2, and delta 2. Otherwise, I am pretty much stimulated by my girlfriend. So GS is for everything else. So GS is for beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, delta 1, H2, and V2 receptors. So as you can see right here, so I have a cute girlfriend. So I told her to have one M and M. So H1, A1, V1, M1, and M3. These are the receptors for GQ. So when I'm too mad at her, so the receptors for too mad, I inhibited her by GI. GI is inhibitory. So M2, A2, D2, these receptors will activate GI. While everything else, she's pretty much stimulated. So GS is for everything else. Beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, delta 1, H2, and V2. So basically, uh, when a molecule that has an affinity for um, H, uh, H1, alpha 1, V1, M1, and M3, it will activate GQ protein. This uh, activation of GQ will activate phospholipase C, and phospholipase C will cleave PIP2 into two uh, parts, two components, which are DAG and, and IP3. DAG is diacylglycerol, IP3 is inositol triphosphate. And the DAG will stay in the cell membrane, whereas IP3 will travel into the cytoplasm and it will activate the sarcoplasmic reticulum to increase the release of calcium and increase in the uh, increasing the concentration of calcium inside the cytoplasm in conjunction with DAG, diacylglycerol, it will activate protein C. So the end result of the activations of, uh, of the GQ receptors um, is the activation of protein C. Whereas on the other hand, um, molecules that bind to the M2, alpha 2, and delta 2 uh, receptors will activate the GI, which is the inhibitory protein, uh, inhibitory proteins, and this will inhibit adenylate cyclase. The inhibitions of adenylate adenylate cyclase will decrease the production of cyclic AMP because typically uh, adenylate cyclase will convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So if you inhibit the adenylate cyclase, will you will decrease the amount of cyclic AMP being produced, and that will lead to a decrease in the activation of protein A, or you can say inhibitions of protein A. Whereas for the GS, these are the receptors for the GS. If you have molecules that have um, affinity for beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, Delta 1, H2, and V2, you will activate uh, when uh, that molecule binds to these receptors, it will activate the GS proteins. And this GS is stimulatory, and it will activate adenylate cyclase. And the activations of adenylate cyclase will convert ATP into cyclic AMP, so you have more cyclic AMP. The cyclic AMP, more cyclic AMP, will activate protein A. So, so the end result for GS 
is the activation. So GS is stimulatory, so it activates protein A through cyclic AMP, whereas GI is inhibitory. It will decrease cyclic AMP, will decrease activations of protein A. GQ, remember GQ, it will activate protein C. So those are, are the uh, the receptors and the G protein linked second messengers. Uh, and that's it.